time value of money. Because money, of course, has a value. You, you can be sure of that. Uh, but time is affecting this value. And actually, money has two values. Has a present value and a future value. And they are not the same. You, you heard about this in another course, another lecture? You, you know what I'm talking about? Present value, future value? I don't want to waste your time and attention. if uh, Not yet. Okay. So it, it goes very easy like this. Let's suppose I have $100 right now. This is today. You can understand that this is what? A present or a future value? It's a present value because I have the money right now. Now, if I make a deposit with this money in a bank, I will get what for my deposit? Interest rate. Why should I get something? Because it's my money, so what? You give them the money, and so what? Yes. If you say I can trust them to keep my money, for me, it would be like you should pay for this. If you trust somebody to take care of your belongings, you should pay for it. Why should I pay the bank? Ah, very good. I have an opportunity cost. Each time I give money, I lend money to somebody where I make a deposit, which is actually similar to lending money. If I make a deposit, my money will be available for the bank. This brings an opportunity cost for me. I have a sacrifice to make. I'm not using the money. I could buy something nice for me with $100. And because I'm making this sacrifice, I should get what? A reward. It's called interest rate. Let's suppose this is 10%. What do, what do I get after one year? This is one year. 100 multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.1. Okay, it's 110. This is how we calculate interest rate. We take the principal, which is 100, plus interest rate multiplied by the principal, which gives me 110. What if I decide to leave my money for a second year? This is the second year. And the interest rate stays the same, 10%. It's a very huge interest rate for our times. How much do I get? Very good. Now I have to take this amount and apply the interest rate to this amount. Yes, not, not to 100 because now my deposit is worth 110. So I, I will calculate 10% plus 110 multiplied by 10%, which is like this. 100, 1 plus 0, 1, multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.1. Which is what? 100 multiplied by 1 plus interest rate, I will call it i, to the power of 2. And if my deposit goes for n years, yeah, it stays there. I, I, I forget about it. I'm just uh, enjoying life, and I'm getting old, old, and old. And one day I remember, you see, uh, I used to have a deposit in a bank. How much do I have? Very good, to the power of n, n years, very good. What is this? Is this a present or future value? Future. This is the future value. Then I have a very nice formula to write. Future value equals present value multiplied by one plus i to the power of n, where n is the number of years, e is the, i is the interest rate, this is the present value. Good, but if I have this nice formula, I can have an even nicer one, which is present value equals future value divided by one plus i to the power of n. And this one is really, really useful because I can use it to look at investment projects, something else. Now I'm changing the perspective and I put it in a different way. An investment project is what? It's an opportunity for me to get money in the future if I pay something right now, if I make this investment. The problem that I have 
is should I do or should I not do this investment project? Should I take it or not? This is a very big question. And I can use this formula to answer this question. Let's see how it's going. I have a business opportunity for you. If you give me some money, I will make a nice uh, software that will predict your grade for the exam. It will be an app. It will look at your face, yeah? You look, and it will read your eyes like this, and you'll say, you have the grade, I don't know, six, seven, ten. This will be very useful for you because if you put the uh, smartphones and you get like a 10, why waste your time learning more? The phone will predict. And I can write this software. I have an idea. You should believe me. I can make a nice company. But, you, you know, I need some resources right now because I will pay for programmers. I'll have to buy computers, rent a space, whatever. I can promise to you, it's a promise, right? that you will get like 100 after one year. This is one year. Uh, three year. After three years, you can get 200. And after three years, we will sell the company. I will sell it to Facebook because you know, they are buying other companies and they will integrate this application in their service. Yeah, when you get friends with somebody, he will also know how much, what is your potential to get as a grade. And of course, you, you will want to be uh, friends with people that get higher grades, maybe. I don't know. Or the difference would be true. So here I will sell the company. Yeah? I will sell it to Facebook and I will make something like 500 for you. Okay. Now, of course, you will have to give me some money right now because I told you I need to make this company. I, I don't have the resources, I don't have the funds to cover all the expenses. And my question would be for 700. This is the cost. $700. What do you think? Are you coming with me or not? We should use the less formula to find out. Very good. Why it's not a good idea to, to sum up these amounts and compare it with the cost? Because this could be like, I don't know, the first thought in my mind could be 100 plus 200 plus 500, this is 8, uh, okay, 8 is higher than 7, this is okay. Why I should not do this? Because you can. You cannot, you can do whatever you want. Yes? Very good, the time value of money. These are different moments of time in the future. This is not the same time for 100 or 200, which means I should not add these amounts of money. This is future value and is far away in the um, future. And more, I cannot compare future money with present money because they are different. What should I do? I can use this formula to calculate the present value of this project and to see if it's a good idea or a bad idea. How do I do that? I write present value of my project is equal to what? I have to discount. This is called discounting. This is the keyword, discounting. I have to discount this 100 in the future because 100 in one year is not the same like 100 today. Yeah, I mean, everybody agrees with me. If you have to choose between 100 on the table and 100 in one year, I mean, it's a very easy decision. You will take the 100 on the table. So <clears throat> I have to discount this amount. Should be low. Using the formula. You, you have the formula. What would be? The present value of 100 is 100 divided by My opportunity cost to choose this project. What else I can do with, with $700 if I don't want to spend it? What else can I do? 
the bank deposit. The bank deposit, very good. If I make a bank deposit, I will get what? Interest rate, let's suppose interest rate is 5%. Then I have to discount the 100 to make the present value using the formula that you saw. It's 100 divided by one plus 5%, and that's it because it's only one year, plus. What's next? 200 divided by plus 5% to the power of 2. Very good, because we have 2 years plus 500, sorry, divided by 1 plus 5% power of 3. Okay, very good. And if I make this calculation and I'm getting something higher than 700, then is the project okay or not? Yes, the project is okay. But if I'm making this calculation and I get something lower than 700, then I will say the project, sorry, it's not good enough for me because it's not covering my opportunity cost from using the money for a deposit, this 5%. But is the calculation all right right now? What do you think? When I wrote the 5% as the opportunity cost, the interest rate from the bank, is this everything that I'm actually giving up? Is my sacrifice very well described with 5% or it's not? Yes or no? No. no. Why? What, what is Another difference between a bank deposit and my super software for reading. Uh, if you put it in the bank, you're 100% sure you'll get it back. Okay, very good. If I put the money to the bank, in a bank deposit, I have a much, much higher confidence that I will get my money back because the banks are very respectful institutions. And moreover, there is an insurance scheme for deposit. For small deposit, and this is a small deposit, $700, there is an insurance. Even if the bank goes bankrupt and is losing all the assets, I will still get my money back. While my uh, super software business is maybe as safe as the bank? What do you think? No. no. It's a very risky opportunity. How do I adjust these calculations to take risk into consideration? Because, because I can do that. Inflation could also be a topic, but let's stick to the risk. What should I change here in order to take care of risk? I have to adjust the numbers. These figures here are given. I cannot change them. But what can I change? Yeah, the discounting factor. This is called discounting factor. It was the interest rate, but maybe this is not telling the whole truth. I should make it lower or higher to reflect the risk? Higher, I should make it higher. I should add, it's called a risk premium. A risk premium, it's something that you demand in order to compensate you for the risk that you are taking. You are taking a risk if you, take, if you go with me in this boat, which means you demand more. You should make it here, I don't know, 8%, 8%. And you will say this. This is how investors talk to entrepreneurs. You will say, you want my money. Let's suppose I'm an investor. You want my money, right? OK. What, what are the future earnings coming from your business? Like this. OK. This is your business plan. Very nice. Now, my friend, please listen carefully. I have to think about interest rate, which is I don't know, 3%. Then I have to add something about inflation, which would be like, I don't know, 1, 2%. And then my friend, believe me, I like your idea, but I cannot work without a risk premium of X percent. And then we add everything, we make the discounting factor, we calculate the present value of your business proposal, and if it's still higher than what you demand from me, then we say, okay, if it's not higher, I will say, sorry, go home, do your homework, and come back again when your numbers will fit my expectations. 